All right. Good afternoon. I want you to just take a few minutes with me today. As uh, yesterday, we looked at uh, Good Friday and what happened according to the account of the Bible. And uh, I won't take very long right now. I just want to share with you a little bit of what the Bible says happened on Saturday, which is really the Sabbath. And um, this was the second day after Jesus was put in the tomb. It's Saturday now. The chief priest and the Pharisees have gathered together with Pilate. Um, the Bible actually says in Mark. Is the right place? Yeah. Sorry. No. One of the other Gospels tells us that uh, it may have been Luke. I'm sorry. I should have had that ready for you guys. I think it was Luke that says that uh, they rested. Yeah, because it was on the Sabbath. And um, the Bible tells us what happened when Jesus had died. If you look over in Colossians, we don't have time to really expound on that right now. But just know that the Bible says over in Colossians chapter two, I believe this has already taken place because Jesus has already defeated sin and hell and death when he crushed the head of Satan on the cross that we celebrated yesterday, Good Friday. And uh, the Bible says in Colossians chapter two, verses 14, speaking of our sins being forgiven, it says he, Jesus, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us and which was hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. I, I think that's where we get the hymn uh, that I shared actually on my Facebook page today. It is well with my soul. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And uh, he goes on to saying uh, when he did this, when he nailed that certificate of debt, which was against us, having nailed it to the cross, Colossians chapter two, verse 15 says, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. I love it. The Lord Jesus has triumphed over the, de over the devil and the demons and those in spiritually high places, as the Bible describes them. And, uh, and we go on to see um, in Revelation chapter one, the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, was is alive forevermore and that he has the keys to death and hell. And then uh, we go read the gospel account, accounts on exactly what happened on that Saturday. Um, well, the, uh, the Bible teaches us that the Pharisees and the chief priests were gathered together now. They called Jesus that deceiver. They called him that deceiver. They did not believe Jesus was who he said he was. The Pharisees rejected Jesus because they trusted in their own righteousness. You see, the very coming of Jesus as the Savior who would save his people from their sins, the very fact that Jesus came to die for sinners uh, calls for every one of us to see our sin and to drop our pride. It's just like the drowning person out in the ocean who cannot save himself. He's drowning and he grabs on to someone who throws him a life preserver. We have to drop our pride. I can't save myself. I'm going to trust in what you brought me, the life preserver. The Pharisees couldn't handle that. They couldn't confess that they were sinners. They believed in what they did. They trusted in their works. And there are people today who sit in churches every week and they're Pharisees because they look down on others who are sinners and they see themselves as good people because they go to church, they bring their Bibles, they give money, they built that church. Their grandfather was in that church and they were raised in that church and they're good people and they're better than others. And they can never be saved because they will never drop their pride and see their sinfulness and acknowledge their need for a savior, acknowledging that they can't save themselves. Well, the Pharisees and the chief priests were gathered together and they called Jesus that deceiver. They didn't receive him as the Messiah, the, their savior, their Lord. They thought he was deceiving people. They thought he was a deceiver. 
And you remember one time they even told him he was casting out demons by the uh, uh, by the ruler of demons, which was crazy. <clears throat> what about you? What do you say about Jesus today, this Easter? Have you read the Bible? Have you read the four Gospels? Do you believe him? Do you believe he is who he says he is? Well, they went on as they gathered together, and the Bible tells us they asked for orders that the grave be made secure. Like this would really matter. What did they think? They had seen every demon in every person who saw Jesus run to him and bow down to him and submit to his authority. They had seen him walk on the water um, or they had seen some of the miracles that he performed. They had seen him heal the sick and restore the lame and restore the hearing of the deaf and the speaking of the mute and the seeing of the blind. They even saw him raise the dead. Did they really think that they could go make the grave secure enough to hold him in? If he said he was going to come back. And then the Bible says they were afraid that his disciples might go steal the body and spread a rumor that he had risen from the dead. And they thought that that would be a worse deception than the first one, that he was deceiving people by telling them he was the, the Messiah and that he was equal to God. And then the second deception being that he had raised from the dead is what they called it. Well, Pilate finally gave them permission to make the grave as secure as they knew how. So the Bible says they went and they put a seal on the stone. Oh, friends, I'm going to tell you that we're talking about God, the son. We're talking about the one who said in Reve Revelation chapter one, I am the resurrection and the life. He told, uh, he said that in the gospel of John. And uh, we're talking about the one who is the life, who is the resurrection, who is the eternal life. And they really think that a seal they put could make it secure so that the Lord Jesus couldn't come back and come out of that grave. Well, tune in for tomorrow's message. Our Hispanic message will be at 10 a.m. And our service in English message will be at 11.15 a.m. Tune in for tomorrow to see what happens. Or better yet, you can go read the Gospels tonight on the accounts of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. For tuning in. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow as we celebrate our risen Savior. No, I'm going to already tell you the end of the story. No seal that any man could make could ever hold the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, in that tomb. Jesus is alive, and we'll celebrate that tomorrow. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you all.